Now I'll tell you what I'm worked up about. Now, in the open, and I, I love this open. It's it's uh, it makes me sound so good, and uh, I like sounding good. I mean, who wouldn't? You know, it's we're all ego driven, and if you're going to be on the air, you are especially ego driven. But uh, we may I make this point. You'll hear me invoke it every now and then that I've got many many years of experience as a television journalist, and I say that not just to brag, although of course there's a bragging element to it. But uh, not just to brag, but it's called this is part of what we we do in television news when we say. Uh, Letting the viewer know the benefit. The viewer benefit or the listener benefit, because this is radio, is that when you listen to, to uh, this particular show and Jim Parisi's show, who's, uh, who is, uh, precedes mine, we are both experienced television news journalists. So you get a journalistic acts aspect to what we're talking about. So the point being, I'm not just some random piece of weirdness off the street. I'm a carefully selected piece of weirdness off the street. So you'll be able to hear... Uh, you, every now and then you'll be able to get the benefit of some of my journalistic training, and you're going to get that today because uh, in the first block of this show, we're going to break down national coverage of, a, of an incident that I don't know if you heard about. It. I'm going to tell you about the incident, and then I'm going to put on my journalism hat, and we're going to break down how the national media or and local media are covering this story because I've got to tell you, I'm worked up about it. So you're going to maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe you'll see a side of me you haven't seen before, but uh, we're going to talk about this in detail. Now, here's the story. It, this happened in a Phil suburban Philadelphia. A psychiatrist named Lee Silverman, and I'm, now I'm quoting from a CNN story. A psychiatrist named Lee Silverman may have saved lives Thursday afternoon. Let me predicate this by a comment I meant to make as an introduction. One of the things you often hear the people who are uh, ultra, the, the ultra left wing gun control people who basically want to take everybody's guns away from everybody, They'll, they point out, and I've seen it, you've heard it, I'm sure you have, that when there's a, a mass shooting, Guns don't help the bystanders. Sometimes we have people who are armed with guns. It doesn't help. That's what happened here in Tucson during the January shootings in 2011. We had people, at least one person, that was there during the shooting with a handgun, never got a chance to use it. And, of course, the, um, uh, the people on the far left say if the price of taking that person's handgun away, if that's the price we've got to pay in order to get the, hand, the guns out of the hands of people that aren't stable, we've got to pay that price because his gun didn't help him. All right, well, here is a case that's going to go right into the NRA newsletter because it shows the opposite. A psychiatrist, his name was Lee Silverman. He's in a suburban Philadelphia hospital. A, a patient of his, a psychiatric patient, comes in with a gun, opens fire, kills a caseworker. Well, guess what? The doctor was packing. The doctor was packing, and he fired back. And this happened um, around 2.30 p.m. I guess that must have been yesterday then. Um no, Eastern Time. Okay, but anyway, it happened uh, at, at the Mercy Fitzgerald Wellness Center in Darby, Pennsylvania. Um, and uh, the, the doctor fires back. The doctor winds up getting wounded. The gunman winds up getting wounded. A hospital employee dies. According to, uh, according to the, this, uh, what the police are saying, this, the Delaware uh, County District Attorney Jack Whelan says that Richard Potts, 49 years old, walked into the psychiatric unit of the building with his caseworker, Teresa Hunt, 53, the two went in, then went into Dr. Silverman's office where an argument ensued. Uh, Hunt, the, um, uh, uh, I guess that must have been the case. Yeah, Hunt, the caseworker, shut the door, called police. Moments later, shots were fired. And according to authorities, another doctor and a caseworker charged into the room. Hunt shot to death. The caseworker lay dead. Uh, they, um, they wrestled him to the, uh, to the ground and held, and held the plots to the floor until... Police arrived. The doctor had fired back. The, the psychiatrist, Silverman's head, was grazed by a bullet. He was treated and released. A plot remains in critical condition at the University of Pennsylvania uh, Hospital after being shot in the arm and torso by a, a gun the psychiatrist was, was carrying. So long, uh, long way to say a short, you know, the short version of the story is whack job comes in with a gun, opens fire, doctor fires back. And the incident ends without further bloodshed. All right, now, let's put on our journalism hats for a minute. You're at the press conference where police are talking about this incident, the one I just described. And you have a chance to ask a question, and maybe you only get one, because you know how these press conferences are. There are a lot of reporters wanting to ask questions. You may only get one shot at asking a question. What are you going to ask of authorities? What's the one question you want to ask? about this situation in which a mentally disturbed person with a gun comes in, opens fire, kills somebody, gets shot in return, and put down. 
All right, what's the one question you're going to ask? Now, when I was a television news director, I always taught the journalists who worked with me, make sure you get a chance to ask a question. And I want you to ask a question that's going to showcase a little bit. First of all, it needs to be a good question, you need a good, good hard-hitting question. We want to get to the answers. And if, if you only get a shot at asking one, uh, ask a question that's going to showcase the values of our journalism organization, which in the case of the journalism organizations I ran – uh, it was called Viewer Advocacy, where we are trying to get answers on behalf of everyday common people. So the idea being that uh, put, your, put yourself in the shoes of everyday common people as best you can and, see, and, and, and try to make sure you're, you ask a question that hasn't yet been answered, that in, it's going to be a question that people are going to want answered. So what is the one question on your mind about this shooting in which a mentally disturbed man gets hold of a gun, takes it to a psychiatric hospital, opens fire, kills somebody, and is shot in return by his psychiatrist who's packing. Okay? Now, while you're thinking about that, I'll give you a couple seconds to think about it. Okay, time's up. We're going to play the CNN version of this story where a local reporter gets to ask one question. And here is the question. If I've got my technology straight and all my potentiometers up, you'll hear the reporter's question. But it's his doctors, officials say, who can hopefully tell them what exactly happened and why. Is this doctor afraid of Mr. Plotz, and is that why he had armed himself? I don't have that information, and until we interview the doctor, that's unclear. In the meantime, the investigation goes on. All right, so in case you missed it, audio was a little low. The reporter wants to know, why was the doctor armed? Is that the question that springs to your mind? I don't know. I can't speak for you. I can only speak for me. The question that sprang to my mind is why was the psychiatric patient armed? And where did he get that gun? Now, as a, as a, a citizen and as a journalist both, I will tell you my views on gun control are passionate yet conflicted. And I, we're going to talk about, I'm going to give you more about how I feel about this in a, in a minute. Because as I said, we're going to turn personal. And I've written about this extensively on my blog. But... I'm conflicted because I want a gun for self-defense. I think we all have that right. I don't want guns to fall in the hands of people that shouldn't have them, like mentally disturbed people. And in that regard, I totally support the efforts of Gabrielle Giffords and her, and her husband who are out there trying to make sensible changes so that we can make common sense steps to keep guns out of the hands of unstable people. So I, I, in general, support those efforts, although in no way do I believe that will solve gun violence. But I just think that if you can do something useful, you ought to do something useful instead of doing nothing. Okay, that's where I'm coming from as a journalist and as a citizen. But I am a strong believer in gun rights overall, and I think people should be allowed to defend themselves. Okay, now let's look at how the media covered this across the country and a little bit overseas. Okay, now, putting on our journalism hat again. We've already, we've already decided as the reporter what our one question is going to be. Why was the doctor armed? Not, why was the psychiatric patient armed? Okay, that's the one question that I get to ask. I've already asked it. Okay, we've made that decision. Now, what's the headline going to be? Again, giving you the benefit of what journalists are actually taught about how to write a headline. You need to write a headline going to capture the viewer reader listeners attention it's going to in some way frame the story so you know what the issue is about and is going to probably focus on an important fact with the story and generally it's going to be the most salient fact okay so in the incident that i just described to you mental patient gets a gun goes to the office opens fire kills somebody is shot in return and put down and is now in critical condition. Out of all those facts, what's the most important fact that you want to reflect in your headline? And while you're thinking about that, I want you to think about another question. And maybe you're one of those people who believe the media are all liberal. And so if you believe that, then think about what a liberal headline would sound like. Or maybe you're more middle of the road and you don't really think the media tend to be liberal. Think of what a objective middle of the road headline would sound like. 
And while you're thinking about that, the, of course, the obvious last question is, okay, if you're on the far right wing or, or more towards the right wing, what would a right wing headline sound like for this story? I'm going to give you some examples of how the media across the country actually did cover this, and we're going to read from, from uh, some actual headlines. Okay, the Huffington Post. Okay, the Huffington Post, very liberal, generally speaking, what do you think a liberal-leaning organization is going to say about this story? Here's their headline. Pennsylvania hospital shooting. Cause sought for gunfight between patient and doctor. Now, that's not as liberal-sounding of a headline as I would have thought or would have guessed. Uh, that uh, headline is, um, is actually fairly close to what I would say would be the middle of the road. However, it's still liberal because... I'm not looking for the cause of the gun fight between the doctor and the patient. The cause for the gun fight between the doctor and the patient is obvious. The patient opened fire. The doctor defended himself. What I'm looking for is the cause of why the patient, A, got a gun and was able to get a gun, and B, why he opened fire. As both a journalist and a citizen, to me, that's the question. So my headline, if I'm going along in this direction of how the Huffington Post went, would be more, the, more along the lines of cause sought for mental patient opening fire. That's how I would have framed it. Okay? That's just me. But journalism choices is hardly ever a black and a white. It's all shades of gray. Here's ABC News. Same thing. Cause sought for gunfight between patient and doctor. New, uh, New York Daily News. Listen to this one. Gun-toting psychiatrist shoots suspect who killed Pennsylvania hospital employee. Okay, number one, he didn't shoot a suspect. He shot a, he shot a gunman. He shot a killer. He didn't shoot a suspect. He shot a killer, in, just in my opinion. All right, but bottom line, that's their, that's their focus. And then we, can, then we can talk later about whether the, the person that's going to be charged in this is the suspect in question. That's where the word suspect comes in, is when you suspect somebody may have done something. But this psychiatrist didn't shoot a suspect. He shot a gunman. And we can talk later about the identity of the gunman and whether that person is suspected of doing this actually did it. But they focused on the psychiatrist. Gun-toting psychiatrist. And now I'm seeing John Wayne with a vest and a badge and a gun saying, come on, Pilgrim, or something like that. And he pulls his, he pulls his piece and returns fire because he is a gun-toting psychiatrist new york daily news here's time magazine and once upon a time i had a person that i really respected say he would never read time because it was so liberal i don't necessarily find it to be that way maybe you do here's their headline shooter kills one at pennsylvania hospital right down the middle slightly left maybe i probably think you really i really needed to hear that it was a mentally disturbed shooter but okay that's right down that's pretty much down the middle shooter kills one at pennsylvania hospital okay Yahoo and AP, this is actually Associated Press by way of Yahoo, same kind of balance, same kind of tack. One dead, two hurt in Pennsylvania hospital shooting. Okay, that's, that's pretty much down the middle. That's what I would say. Somebody's trying not to offend either side and is probably pleasing neither side, which is what winds up happening. USA Today, we're back to the doctor. Pennsylvania doctor shoots patient who killed caseworker. Well, at least I, at least I get to know that the guy was A, a patient, and B, had killed somebody before the Pennsylvania doctor shoots him. Still, the focus is on the doctor. But that's better than gun-toting psychiatrist. It's even better than case sought for, cause sought for gunfight between patient and doctor. Patient was a whack job who opened fire. That's the cause. All right, but this one still focuses on the doctor, but having focused on the doctor... At least you get to know in the headline that he shot somebody who shot somebody. Okay? Self-defense. Right away, you know this. Fox News. Okay? Now, we all know Fox News leans to the right. Its news coverage less obviously leans to the right, in my opinion. Others have differing opinions. And I would agree that Fox News is the one organization of all the ones I'm looking at today. The one organization most likely... To have a middle of the road, uh, to have, excuse me, to have a right-leaning headline. But here's their headline. Wounded doctor 
fired back at gunmen. Yeah, that's pretty much more more along the lines of what I would expect. And now they're letting you know that the doctor, he wasn't just fighting back. He'd been shot himself. Okay, so that double underscores the self-defense angle. And um, he, they didn't quite come out and say that the doctor was a hero, but they came very close to it. That's what I would more or less expect from from Jack from uh, Fox News. Now, my favorite of all the of all the headlines I'm going to read to you today comes from a TV station in Jacksonville, WJXT, which writes: "Doctor shoots armed patient at PA hospital." Okay, you don't get to hear in the headline that the patient had opened fire, or that anything bad had happened. And from the headline, your first impression is going to be a patient has a gun, the doctor shoots him. That's not what happened. In their subtitle, they go on to say, or subheadline, authorities say it appears a psychiatric patient shot and killed a caseworker. It appears that a psychiatric patient shot and killed a caseworker. And so they're giving the benefit of the doubt to the psychiatric patient, not the doctor. And when you go and you quote, you look at the press conference from when, from which they're quoting, the police are actually saying, well, this is what we're hearing from the scene. So the word appears actually could apply equally to either party. But no, in this headline, it's only going to apply to the shooter because that's who we're going to give the benefit of the doubt to in this headline. CBS News, doctor had gun. Comma, wounded hospital worker, prosecutor says. New York Post, doctor fired back in a deadly hospital shooting. Okay. That one, to me, is more appropriate. NBC Philadelphia, case worker dead. Let's not forget here, somebody died, right? That's appropriate. Two others shot at Mercy Fitzgerald Hospital campus. Okay, sort of leaves out, though, the heart of the story. But it did focus on the victim here, which I think is refreshing. Okay, so I'll give them a B minus. Philly.com. Psych patient shoots two at Darby Hospital. Doctor returns fire. Bingo. I had to search through three pages of headlines before I found that one. In my newsroom, that's the headline you would have heard. Psych patient shoots two doctor returns fire this is about a psych patient with a gun is what this is about yet another one in a long series of psych patients or people who should be psych patients with a gun harming somebody that's the most important element here and secondarily the doctor successfully turned fire also very important a plus 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 to philly.com And now, finally, I found one even further uh, uh, off to the right. UK Daily Mail. Going overseas now to find this one. Hero Doctor Stops Hospital Shooting Rampage. I wouldn't have done that one because the circumstances are so preliminary. I'm not ready to call the doctor a hero yet. But the Daily Mail was. We have a caller on the line. uh, And we will get to Aaron uh, right after these messages. And that will give us some breathing room to talk more about this. The Forest Car Show will continue right after this. Okay, we were talking about guns and the media coverage today, which is going to focus on why did the doctor have a gun? I walked you through how journalists arrive at this decision to decide what they're going to focus on. Now, armed with that knowledge, you can decide for yourself. Remember, that's our slogan, the power to think for yourself. You can decide for yourself what it, what's important to know about in this particular case. But the media today, and you watch, watch the news, and this is probably what you'll see, because we're already seeing it. Why did the doctor have a gun? Not, why did the mentally unstable, potentially violent person have a gun? Which is the question that, my view, we ought to be asking. Aaron, welcome to the, um, the Forest Car Show. What have you got for us today? Good morning, Forest. I love your show. Thanks, man. You got the, um, we're definitely on the same sheet of music when it comes to the, um, with these gun rights. Uh, want to have people that, uh, can protect themselves, but you don't want to have dangerous people or mentally ill people uh, carrying weapons there. That's that's not a good thing. And no, totally totally to agree the, with you. Just, of course, the all the arguments about how do you achieve that and still let people have their guns, which, by the way, and, and don't believe what the NRA says, this is really not about self-defense. NRA, in my opinion, is more concerned about protecting 
uh, protect people protecting themselves from civil unrest and their own government. I think that's what the NRA is really about. Mm-hmm. With the uh, with this issue with the the doctor and the, and that patient, the um, the doctor I don't he's on the front line of dealing with the mentally ill, so he's probably scared. He knows what he knows the the his customers, and he's probably like you know I'm not a PC guy, but he's probably thinking, man, these people are crazy. I need to protect myself. Yeah, I got you know I get and, 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 and after he was all the right. media, yeah after he all the media right. reports you've heard after what happened here in Tucson. Yeah, I would imagine that that's probably true. And, of course, you know, people on the other side of the issue will tell you that these things get blown out of proportion. The media always focuses on them. It's all out of proportion as to what really happens with mentally ill people. And that's, by the way, true. Most, you know, only a very, 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 very small percentage of people who have mental health issues uh, will ever pick up a gun. But every time they do, we report about it on the media. And that's all true. That is all true. That happens. And yet, issue just doesn't go away, does it? Yeah, and a lot of times we don't know exactly, like, some of them have committed suicide, you know, like after the, um, you know, the shootings at the, at the, at the colleges and the schools. So right. we don't even know what their, their, their issues were in the past. But, yeah, that, I don't, the doctor, he has every right. And you would expect that a doctor, of all people, you know, he's, a doctor is one of the most stable people. You know, he has knowledge and everything. So you would think. You know, he should have a right to defend himself. Now, of course, what, do you, what you're going to hear today, Aaron, and I haven't seen it yet in the coverage that I monitored. You're going to see it. A doctor takes a Hippocratic Oath. very first thing that a doctor swears to do is, first and foremost, do no harm. So if you're treating somebody and you kill them, that's not a good thing. Okay, And that's, that's, a, that's a, a question that's it's legit, it's a legitimate question. It does need to be asked. But uh, that's, you're going to see that being the entire focus of, of the coverage today, when really we, what we really need to be talking about is, A, how is it that mentally unstable people keep laying their hands on firearms? And is there, oh, for, for the love of God, is there nothing we can do about that? And then B, why is this doctor in a situation where, I mean, I'm presuming, I believe what you just said, Aaron, dead on target, dead on target. Why is it that this doctor felt the need to have a gun in his psychiatric practice? Why did he feel that need? Now, I'm going to presume the answer. I'm presuming the answer is because he knew that some of these patients are potentially dangerous. And he also knew that as a society, we do very, very little to see to it that those patients are controlled and don't get access to the kinds of weapons that can lead to mass murder. Yeah, you're right on target for us. Thank you so much. Did you? Uh, what did you think about um, the different headlines that I that I read out? Does that surprise you at all that the media would focus on why did the doctor had a, have a gun instead of why did the patient have a gun? You know, the, there is a liberal slant, and I understand where they come from. They 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 don't want anybody to have weapons, but at least there's the other side too. And um, you know, like you said, that the people got to be able to protect themselves, and especially this doctor. He yeah. knows what he's dealing with. I think that there is probably a, at least a slightly liberal slant here. But, Aaron, I'll give you another bit of insight. What the media also focus on is the unusual. And so, sad to say, well, let me put this another way. How sad is it that yet another whack job with yet another gun killing yet more people is usual? What's unusual is for somebody to fight back. That's one of the reasons why they're focusing on it. It's not just because... Or even maybe it might not even be because they have a liberal slant. It's just that this is a this is sort of a man bites dog kind of story. We expect we have now reached the point in our society where we expect mentally unstable people. And it's really not fair, as I just pointed out, because it's not the case. It's one of those uh, stigma that we place on the mentally ill. That's not totally fair. Yet we have reached the point where we sort of expect this to happen. And we don't expect for somebody to fight back. And we certainly don't expect for it to be. The guy's doctor, that's why they're focusing on it. Yet still, the question I think will probably be, probably not totally lost, but at least buried, pushed down. How did this particular patient get a gun and what can be done to stop that? I, and so I think when people, and you know, I, I go through this and I get worked up about it because I want people to know what goes on behind the scenes, how these decisions get reached, how these headlines get written, how these questions get answered, asked rather, what goes on in that process? And people suspect what you just said, Aaron. They suspect it's probably just liberal slant. 
There's really more to it than that. But the liberal slant is is a, a part of the ingredient, but it's just one of the many ingredients in the cake. See, personally, they, we already have a, a background check for criminals, and that's that's because of their behavior. We just need to include another behavior of the uh, mental illness. That That's it. So that include a background check for that. And, you know, the exact process of how to do that, I don't know. That's for, you know, the public to decide. But uh, we just need to uh, make sure that... Uh, the people that do get weapons are, you know, stable people. Yeah. Somewhat. And we need to be able to talk about this more without the NRA throwing its weight around. Because, I, you know, as a news person, I would hear about this all the time, where a legislator is is on the fence about what to do. They've got constituents. And most Americans, by the way, according to the polls, would favor some form of reasonable steps to take to improve this situation, decrease the odds of mentally unstable people getting weapons. The NRA, every time they encounter, at least in my experience, when I've covered legislatures or have or have supervised staffs or reporters who do, the NRA has no problem pulling somebody aside and say, if you vote for whatever it is they're about to vote for that the NRA doesn't like, we will throw our entire weight at getting you defeated. We will do on-air campaigns. We will do mailers. We will do robocalls. We will put items in our newsletter. Our, the entire weight of our wrath will come down upon you. So if you vote for this bill, enjoying your, enjoy yourself because we're going to see that you're term limited out. You will lose the next election. And they've been able to do it time and time and time and time again. Only recently have some legislators have, A, had the courage to stand up to these bullying tactics, tactics and also, B, survived it. It's starting to happen. But for the most part, the NRA still has this incredible ability just to shut down the conversation. That's why I depart with the NRA. Yeah, they definitely got to change that attitude. You know, at least, I, you know, I could see that, uh, you know, people having their weapons in the Second Amendment, but sooner or later, you know, somebody's going to have a kid in college and, you know, they're going to be hurt by that situation because they, they push too hard one way and then think about the general safety and welfare of the public. Yeah. All right, Aaron, thank you for calling. And uh, right. we, we love hearing from you, so thanks for calling the show. Now I'm going to wax personal a little bit, because I told you that I've, I've, um, I've written about this on my blog, The Bashful Bloviator. This is right on target. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share with you some thoughts about uh, where I come from personally on, on gun control. And, um, and I'm going to frame it in terms of a, of a blog entry that, that uh, I wrote oh, several weeks ago. And I'll, I'll put it on the links page uh, later today. So that you can find it if you if should you care to do so. But the the title of the blog entry was Five Things I Feel Guilty About and Three I Don't, in no in particular order. Okay? I feel bad about the Easter egg. When I was in kindergarten, I won a small gold plastic candy filled Easter egg in a drawing. It was the first and only time in my life I've ever won a prize. Classmate asked me if he could have a mint from the egg. I said no. And he was crushed. Yeah, you know what? I know. It was only kindergarten. I still remember that. I'm guilty about the move. Uh, many years ago, I forced my lovely bride, whom I sometimes refer to as Bride of the Bloviator, to choose between me and her career. She chose me and moved uh, with me, and I took her away from a job that she loved. I've always felt guilty about that. I'm still mortified about the breakup. My first romance when I was uh, many, 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 many years ago, and you don't get to know how many, did not end well. It was my fault, uh, largely, and I really kind of acted poorly, and I've always felt bad about that. I feel bad about this kid when I was in the seventh grade. This, uh, I made a friend, started coming over unannounced and got to be kind of aggravating. And rather than uh, work this out with him on how he could come over and be announced and not be so aggravating, my, uh, me and my other friend kind of made fun of him and ran him the hell off. And I have always felt guilty about that. Seventh grade. Here's what I don't feel bad about. I do not feel bad about owning a gun. One night many, many years ago, when the bride and I were living in a not-so-great neighborhood earlier in my career, a loud crash at the apartment door jolted me right out of a sound sleep. I jumped out of bed, I ran to the door, and there I stood, barefoot in my sky-blue PJs, not knowing what the heck I was going to do if that door were to burst open. I'm not a physically intimidating guy. Didn't feel good about my chances of defending myself and my wife against what could have been a crazed intruder. Maybe armed with a gun, maybe armed with a knife, maybe high on PCP, which was going around at that time. I ran to the kitchen. I jerked open a drawer. I grabbed a carving knife, dashed back to the door and waited. I have never 
felt so naked in my life. And you know what? The stranger went away. Nothing happened. The next day, I went out and bought a handgun. I feel good, however, about not supporting the NRA. The NRA has done a very, very good job of defending the rights of gun owners like me. And I appreciate that, really. I do. But here's the thing. When I came back to Tucson as a TV news director in 2009, a really nice elected official called me personally on the phone from Washington, D.C. to welcome me. No one else did that. Okay? The official was then-Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords. Now, I had encountered her earlier in an, in a, in an earlier TV, new, Tucson TV news job, well before she went into politics and went to Washington. Not in such a way, though, that I thought she would probably remember me. And certainly on the phone call, she didn't remember it. She didn't mention it. You know, she was just being nice and she was being professional. One year later, a madman shot that nice professional lady in the head, along with many other people. The latest shootings, and, and doesn't it say something? I have to qualify this sentence with that word, latest shootings, including the recent ones in California, the Fort Hood shootings before that, the Pennsylvania school stabbings before that, many, 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 many more mass casualty incidents before those remind us that it's, you know, it's true. It is people who kill people, and some of them will find a way to do it with one weapon or another, no matter what. I totally get that. There will never be a solution for that. The essential problem is with us, humanity, me and you, okay? Not the choice of hardware. If you take away guns, people will poke each other with swords, which is what they were doing before. And if you take away their swords, they'll, they'll fashion knives. And if you take away their knives, they'll do shivs. And if you take those away, they'll do clubs. And if you take those away, they'll do rocks. And then we're back to two, the beginning of 2001 Space Odyssey when somebody picked up a bone and bashed somebody with it. Okay, we, we kill each other. We are a violent race that's never going to stop, ever. However, all things being equal, if we can improve the odds by taking reasonable steps to keep guns out of the hands of unstable individuals, it seems to me that would be prudent. The NRA is fine with the way things are. We part company. I feel guilty about living in a society that is so awash in unrestricted gun violence. I don't feel guilty about saying so. Thank you for letting me do it. Forest Car Show will continue after these messages. 